Welcome to another episode of Dad's Rolls with Kevin Belzer. And today I'm joined by the former lead singer of Javelin. Javelin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's got more depth to him than, than that. But we're definitely going to have to dive into Michael's origin story. I have Mr. Sunshine. That's me, Mr. Sunshine. Mr. Sunshine Solar. Yep, Mr. Sunshine Solar. That's your full name, Mr. Sunshine Solar. Well, the company, yeah, Mr. Sunshine Solar. So <laughs> otherwise, just Michael Jansen is fine. Michael, you know, but uh, yeah, they call me Mr. Sunshine. How many people uh, do call you Mr. Sunshine and don't know your name? Um, more and more all the time, oddly enough. It's funny. And um, I got to tell you, uh, there's, a, there's a funny story behind that. I didn't pick the name Mr. Sunshine. Okay. It, was, it fell on me. Okay. And I was on a, a show, uh, Arizona Midday. It's one of those lifestyle shows where they, yep. they teach you how to decorate your holiday table. I was the guy that came on after they taught you how to decorate your holiday table. And um, I, I'd been on three or four times. And this one time she goes, uh, Destry Jatan, the host, she goes, so how'd you get the name Mr. Sunshine? This, these shows are live, guys. They're, they're live. So you don't go, what are you talking about? I'd never heard this. Never heard this. And... Uh, so I just, I go, well, it must be my sunny disposition, I guess. And the fact that I'm in solar and I'm a pretty happy guy, I'm just kind of like trying to spit something out. And after the show, I go, what was that all about? And she's like, what? I go, where'd you get the name Mr. Sunshine? She goes, oh, I was just having fun. Well, I'll tell you what, it stuck like glue. And I walk into my office and they watch these live broadcasts yeah. in the office. And so I walk back in the office and my partner at the time opens up the door it sees me come in the windows or ten. He opens up the door and everybody, Mr. Sunshine, Mr. Sunshine here. And they're all standing there clapping. Like, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> the next day, he's got a box of business cards that say Michael, Mr. Sunshine Jansen on them. And um, but it was our marketing people that pursued this for months because I ended up doing Arizona Midday, Your Life A to Z, Sonoran Living, uh, the Daily Mix, and they would all say, Coming up next is Mr. Sunshine, blah, blah, blah. So was the company name at that time Mr. Sunshine? It was Solar? Rocket Solar. It was Rocket Solar. So it wasn't even Mr. Sunshine Solar. No, I named Solar. it Rocket Solar after my dog Rocket. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. And I ended up seeing the numbers of the organic searches. Yeah. And I went, done. Yeah, we'll change it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you just have to go with the flow. Yeah. And so I didn't like it at first. I really didn't. I'm like, Mr. Sunshine. It just sounded goofy to me. And uh, But I've, I've grown to love it. Yeah. And um, the public seems to respond to it very, very well. Well, it's like my splash program. I didn't come up with the name. No. Yeah, Jason Von Payne and yeah. Nate Palmer. They came up with it on on a walk on a San Diego beach. And it's oh, like Oh, that's like I, I'm like, okay. That, was that at that that summit that uh, you did with uh, We Nick did a few of them. Uh that would be the 20 let's see it was January of 22. Yeah, January yeah. 22. Because we did a huge summit in, I wouldn't say huge, it was a smaller group of us in December of 2019. That was the whole origins of that whole group coming together. And I was talking about to this it's somebody. It's a rad story. I mean, it, it really is. It's pretty cool because what was neat about it then is that JVP, Jason Von Payne, had just started State 48 Roofing in a few months before in 2019. And Nick said, hey, I want to do a mastermind and made it open to anybody to come out to San Diego, hang out at this beach house. There was a hotel three doors down, right? like the band, three doors down <laughs> from the beach house. You could literally walk out of the hotel on the beach and then to the house. So you mean there was a bar three doors? <laughs> there, there was, yeah. Yeah. Some people uh, participated. I did not. I did have their flatbed, flat bread pizza it was pretty darn good but anyway i digress so there was maybe 12 of us there and yet nick made an open Im invitation and you know he has thousands of right. followers he had thousands back then made an open invitation anybody shows up you're more than welcome 12 of us that's it and there was people making millions in that room there's people on the way up in that room and 12 of us got the knowledge and out of Say, that, I, what, what I've heard of that first event and subsequent ones, um, a book needs to be written just about that. 
probably I mean, my notes really... out of that are insane. You ever yeah. see me show up in an event? I'm still filling it because Nick gave out this really thick, hardbound book to take notes in. Yeah. And I'm still working any event I ever go to that Nick's involved no, in. I'm see, taking I see, more notes. Yeah, I, I see you always. Uh, yep. The beginning of that is is all notes from that event. Wow. And, and I, I told the guys, I go, look, I only took a couple things out of there and implemented them and watched my income go to where I was staggering around 100000 And that year tripled it, more than tripled it. Wow. To over 300000 just off of a couple ideas that came out of that weekend. So when people talk about do masterminds, is there any value there? Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, I... I'm 57, right? Yeah. And I'm just just now engaging in this in the last year and a half. Yeah. And game changer. I mean, I if I could kick myself any harder, I'd probably hurt myself um, right. for not doing this decades earlier, starting to delve into I was just like, I was in, you know, things like even BNI and read this book and read that book and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I've got a whole story behind my book reading stuff, but um, I just never engaged. I mastered... Solar, yeah, and I mastered my career prior to that, which was telecommunications, data networking, but I never mastered business or marketing, right? And um, just going off the assumption that if you're great at something, you'll do great in business. Oh, totally. <laughs> no, no, no. no Anybody it's like... watching this, pay close attention to that statement because it's—I'm telling you—it's the absolute truth. Become the greatest at what you do. Become greater at understanding marketing and, and business and um, interpersonal skills and growth and in all areas. That will create the success. Your expertise and knowledge in your field can catapult you to the top. Yeah, right? you could take your, your business down to a very simple little statement, like for mine, see home, show home, sell home. That's so funny. I, I dumbed it way down, but we both know that there's more to it than that. I, I got to, you know, I love the fact that you did that because I don't know that I've ever encountered anybody that's done that. I've taken, so I used to, mm -hmm. I used to explain how photons from the sun are converted into electrical energy through a chemical process via an end panel and a feed panel, <laughs> right? Because I learned look, that in our green. <laughs> look, look, look how smart I am, right? Yeah. I now... In a two-hour uh, meeting with a homeowner, mm -hmm. my explanation of solar right. is the sun shines down on your house and magic happens. These panels produce mm -hmm. electricity that you don't need to buy from the power company. That's solar. It's all the other stuff that's associated with it that mm -hmm. needs explaining. So yeah. the fact that you, you had the wherewithal to dumb it down I like that, I don't think I've ever talked to anybody <laughs> that's done that. That's cool. It, it really should be that simple. And... The funny thing is I'm training new agents now. I'm doing Loom videos, training them. I know that you do a lot of training videos yeah. as well. So we both know that there's a lot of dumb questions that need to be answered or basic questions that need to be answered for them. However, we both would probably like our people that work for us, for me, the other agents that work with me, to take a step back and understand that it's see a home online, show that home to somebody in person, and then sell that home. And for you, it's you, know, you could you could dumb it back down. Yes, you do want them to have all the knowledge in the world. And we're going to go into part two, not on this episode. We'll go into right. part two where we're going to go into a lot of education as far as solar is concerned. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they need to understand the basics of it first, and then we can start filling their minds with all the minutia, right. all the no, geek absolutely. out stuff that it they want. And what it is is, again, to, to really simplify it, this is your electric bill. Mm -hmm. This is your solar bill. You can trade, you can keep one of them. You can continue to pay the bill that has always gone up, yep. that always will go up, always will go up, mm -hmm. that has no finish line, so you can never pay it off. Or you can trade it for a lesser bill, i.e. solar, that will never go up, does have a finish line and yep. the gap is the space between the path you're on and the path we put you on this right. big triangle is savings that grows bigger and bigger i mean it's that's what it all boils down to you're going to pay this or you're going to pay this 
Mm-hmm. Pick one. People have an, a, an, an, in, an innate ability to complicate things, right? Oh, yes. And overthink it and stuff. But And I get it. Society has conditioned us because of the, the bad guys out there, right? That are and, there, and there are. And so they're, <clears throat> they're right to an extent. There are, what, 300 solar companies roughly in the state Actually, of Arizona? Actually, there's, there's uh, over 500. Okay, so it's way worse but than I thought. I say solar companies, right? Solar companies. Yes, Sol- in air quotes. Th- they're they're um, sales organizations that maybe used to sell alarm systems, that used to sell satellite dish services. Pest control. Pest control, right? <clears throat> so they've switched their sales model, and they're built, designed, and geared towards making sales. Versus Door-to-door meat sales. Versus educating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? There's just salespeople. This is one of my big statements that I make to homeowners. Um, and really anybody that will hear it to contemplate it is salespeople sell appliances. Right. They sell cars. And now a bunch of them sell solar. Um, sales professionals mm-hmm. educate consumers and create understanding. Big gap between the two. They both start with the word sales, but... You know, I, I personally look at, you know, salespeople and sales process, a negative connotation comes to mind. And I believe that most people have the same thing, even salespeople. Right. And so nobody wants to experience that. So why put them through that? If you're in selling of something, um, put yourself in a position where you can educate them mm-hmm. versus selling them. Right. And I see all these sales training programs and sell, 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 and some of the big names out there that are making millions off of teaching others how to sell. I notice that there's no, there's no uh, component of actually educating them. It's how right. to sell. Sales, in the way I've broken it down, is professional manipulation. Mm-hmm. And um, it can be done ethically. It can be done honestly and done with honor and, and everything else and do the right thing for the consumer if you just get the commission thirst out of your brain and focus on helping helping that homeowner or consumer, whatever it is that they're buying. Right. That makes all the difference in the world. And those are the guys that I've seen that do the best, that educate their their prospect. Right. So, yeah, that's that's my whole MO is we've, we've really stripped away the, the sales process and the Feel, felt, found, and uh, FUD, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and ABCs, always be closed. Right. We throw all that crap in the trash. I know how you feel, and I felt the same way. But you want to know what I found out? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. We all know it. And Ford. the thing is, is the, the other one. become yeah. savvy to it. They do. It. Well, y- yes, to an extent. Y- uh, yes. I think that their alarm bells, their um, their guard is up a lot more and, and than, it, so. than it once was. And, yeah, and, and rightfully and, so. And I don't disagree with that. I, yeah. I, I agree, too, on that. And I have dealt with, on the resale side, so many bad contracts to where I'm like, where I've had back-to-back listings to where this one has $60,000 worth of panels on it, and it's a 1,300-square-foot house. And then I'll go to this other one that is also 60000 It's a 2,600-square-foot home. It has battery packs on the side of the house as well. And I'm like, oh, okay, we, we can both do the math on this and go that somebody made a really healthy commission on that first example there. Because them batteries are very expensive. They're very expensive. And my client that has those, with his 60 he he doesn't bat an eye about it. Whereas that other one, I had to figure out, okay, how am I going to resell this house with a $60,000 lease on it oh, to the next, lease. yeah, 60,000 lease. That, how am I going to sell this to the next consumer? Can, can I interject something really quick about leasing? Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> oh my God. Don't lease. Don't rent the solar electric system. You're already renting the power from the utility company. Right. Don't do it. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. We can get into that when we get into sure. the next episode there. I want to take a left here because I want to get your your origin story okay. taken care of before we dive. Because you know we can geek out on solar, both of us, because we're in the housing world. 
But I want to save that for a part two episode. Sure. Possibly part three as well. It just depends how long when do we get. I say I talk a lot. We might, I, we might and have you know a, little, what? a mini series here. <laughs> there is a reason because it's like most people know by now that that I promised you episode 100. So this is going to be episode 100. Yes. Which is funny because I've actually recorded past that and I'm holding this slot open wow. <laughs> for you. I appreciate it. Wow. I mean, but, but you know, hey, you asked. And I'm, I'm big on that. You ask. And you have a better chance of getting a yes. If you never ask, That's a good point. the answer is always going to no. be possibly or, a no. Yeah, or yeah, whatever, right? By right. chance. So huh. <laughs> anyway, um, before we go down that rabbit hole, which will take us quite a while, you were in a rock and roll band called Javelin. 80s, 80s. Uh, my dad called us hair farmers. Hair farmers. hair farmers. Okay, now that term I haven't heard because I am huge into <laughs> hair metal. Yeah, my it was just my dad's thing because my dad's an old retired Marine, still yeah. wears his crew cut today, and so you and your 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 hair farmer girlfriends, right? You, you know, because we had long hair, and you just had fun with it. But yeah, hair farmer. So I was I was the lead singer for Javelin. Uh, this is during the uh, mid through late eighties, early nineties. Okay, and the the hair was big. It was Aquanet right. extra super hold in the pink can. That was the secret trick. Oh yeah, I used it too. I used yeah. to have hair halfway, uh, more than halfway down my back. Yeah, yeah. Right you had to have the rocker hair. So I, um, I got uh, uh, involved with music late in high school with uh, my buddy Rob, and and um, I was in this band. It was uh, a little bit better than a garage band, and um, we had a little rehearsal studio in the in town, and. Um, what this, state was this in? This is in California, Southern California. Okay. So I'm in, I'm in the right you're place. In, the you're right in, you're in, yeah, yeah, right there. And, um, so I'm at this club, I'll kind of skip forward. I'm at this club, uh, that a lot of rock rockers, rock bands mm-hmm. hang out at. And this guy walks up to me, KJ, the drummer for Javelin, right. um, comes up to me and he's like, dude, are you a singer? I mean, just like the typical Spicoli kind of right, tone right. that you would expect. Dude, are you a singer? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you look like one. Come here, check this out. And I literally followed him out the club just uh-huh. on those. I'll never forget it. And we climb in the back of his buddy's. I climb in the back of his buddy's Mustang Mach 1. It's like the 73 Mach 1. Right, right. And um, puts in a cassette. And he's like, this is the album we're recording. They were already signed with Paramount. They just fired their singer. And they were looking for a new singer. Yeah. And KJ cared more about the image Paramount, than the CBS. voice. Paramount, CBS. Yeah, Paramount, Paramount Records. Okay. And um, so um, the band was actually called Flynn at the time, F-L-Y-N-N. And okay. And Sean and Todd Flynn, the guitar players, that's, that was the name of the band. Um, so I'm listening to this going, wow, holy cow. And um, way just beyond anything that I had done at this point at the ripe old age of 19. Right. And uh, I go to the studio with them and meet the guys, they play, I'm just blown away. And Sean, the, the oldest member and the oldest brother, uh, gives me a cassette and says, here, pick one of the tunes on this, see what you can come up with and come back when you're ready. Okay. Okay, cool. So I go, I hang out out back outside in the parking lot and I'm listening to this over and over again. And I get an idea and I go back about an hour later and knock on the back of the studio door and he opens it up and he's like, did you forget something? I'm like, no, you said, make, you know, see what I can come up with. He goes, you already, you already did. He meant like next week or whatever. Right. I, I have no idea. So I go in and belt out a tune, and they're like, "Dude, you're in. You yeah. want, you want this." And it ended up on, it ended up on the record, and just that quick, all of a sudden, everything changed. And you know, I was. Lead so you guys have this. an album out? Uh, yeah, well, it was a four-song EP okay. that we had done, and uh, this was released in 1985 oh, on yeah. vinyl. Nice for you younger people that are under like four. Well, actually, vinyl sells very well now. So the, even the okay. youngins know vinyl. My son buys. <laughs> there, there was a time where my kids did not know what. Oh this no, big my kids buy is. vinyl. So, and they yeah. would laugh at me. I have big big posters of us and the, the 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 clothes and the outfits and you know all that stuff in in the house. And they used to giggle and w- their little friends. And, <laughs> yep, that's my it's dad. it's come completely back yeah, around. It's now like, they think I'm cool. Oh, they look at my CD collection and laugh because they got vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> CDs. Oh my God, really? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you got you got some CDs. Got a 
few thousand. Yeah. So. I, I don't know what the total is, somewhere around 6,000. But it's funny, my, my thing with the band, and I didn't realize this because, you know, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm writing a book called The Exception to the Perception. Okay. And it's, it's about, it goes all the way back to those days. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked like the atypical 80s rocker guy with the big hair, long hair, the clothes, and yep. and I didn't wear eyeliner, and it was, I didn't wear spandex. I was just behind that, thank God. Um, but I looked the part of the guy that was the womanizer, the uh-huh. wild guy that doing as much cocaine as he could stuff right. up his nose and drink and this and that and everything. And I've never had a drink in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm 57. I don't drink, and it's. I had a sip of beer when I was four years old. Yeah, I didn't like the taste so much. I've never touched alcohol since. Not yeah. a moral thing for me. I just didn't like. I the taste. quit when I was 23. I didn't see the point, and and I and mind you that I don't remember my second semester, of my senior year, most of it because <laughs> I had. See, my own. I remember the 80s because of that. Well, <laughs> I had my own place my senior year of high school, so. That second semester, we did a lot of partying. Yeah. So there, there was a lot of mischief going on then. And since I had my own place, the parties were at my house. But yeah, <laughs> I, that's uh, I I looked the part, but I wasn't. I didn't mm-hmm. do drugs. It was it just wasn't my thing. I, t- I tried cocaine once. I liked it so much. I swore I'd never do it again. Honest, swear to God. Now, I've actually heard that from a few people. Yeah. On and, that, and and I never touched it because I was like, I know I'll like this. Yeah. And so it's. I was lucky in that sense, smart enough. I don't know what it was, mm-hmm. but whatever. I got through. I went through the '80s sober, and I had a ball. And uh, but I looked the part. I was the exception to the perception. Right. I got treated like that guy that was a womanizer, disrespectful to the police, doing drugs, has right. drugs. I got pulled over. They, anytime I got pulled over, I'd have to exit the car, sit sit on the curb on my hands, and I was yes sir, good evening officer, and you know. My dad's a retired Marine, man. I mean, he taught me about respect. Right. And, um, but I got treated based on the perception, and I understood why. So right. I never bitched about it. I don't t- to this day. Um, but subsequently, you know, I was the exception to the perception. And when I went corporate, I looked, I was suit and tie and polished. I did things very differently and was the exception to, to that perception. And, it, it is funny, and I'm not saying it's right, but I do remember when I cut my hair that all of a sudden I got treated better mm-hmm. than when I had the long hair. Yeah. I was the same person on the inside, yeah. but it is funny how people will perceive you as something that you're not. And so that's just kind of been my MO. And then so now with solar, um, every clown that can spell the word solar, S-O-U-L-U-R, right? Something like that, um, <laughs> is, is pushing it. And... So that got added to the name of the book. It's the exception to the perception, Solar Bros, S-O-U-L-U-R, Solar Bros versus Solar Pros. And I tell my story, but also define what the differences are. Right. <clears throat> and um, Well, and it seems you know. that you've ran your company different than every other solar company out there that I know. Completely different. And, and it's intentional. Very much so. Um, and I'm not stupid, right? I'm not just doing it <clears throat> to be Robin Hood. I, I've been accused of having a, a Robin Hood complex, do-gooder, um, which no, I don't No, no, I, do, I, don't, I don't think that at all. <clears throat> I, I think that you're, you're like, hey, I want to be honest, so I'm going to run an honest company. Um, with, Overtly honest, though. Exactly. And me, I'm <clears throat> like, I don't want to be bored, so I don't do real estate boring. Because it's yeah. like, it's mind-numbing, and, and I don't want to be that... <laughs> I, yeah, it, it, I, I just it's can't. It's not like we're selling hot rods or choppers. No, it, it's really, it's, it's boring. It, it's more know, interesting it, than solar. No, I, no, no. <laughs> but, no, I was talking, it's like, you think about solar, it's just, it's flat panels on a roof. Yeah. And it can be boring. Yeah. Or you can be Mr. Sunshine and make it exciting. Same thing with real estate. It's like, it, a lot of it's like, here's another three-bedroom, two-bath another tracked home here in the valley gotcha and then i've got to figure out okay well how do i make this more exciting to to people out there because i don't want to be bored either and i don't want to put content out there that's going to bore people to where it's just another video to where people are like yeah yeah yeah. you've heard this before i i'd rather just where they're like i wonder what stupid thing he's going to say because i will because i don't edit it it's one taken and whatever it is it is (laughs) 
So it's like if I got dumb, hey, it's uh, it's on there forever. Right. I'm okay with that. And it's kind of funny because when I started the podcast, I would over edit everything, and I was like why am I doing it with podcasting yet? I've never done that with real estate <laughs> videos. I've always been like, whatever it is, it is. I actually warn my prospects. I you what? I warn them about me. I'm like, so just so you know, if you're easily offended, um, either with off color humor or off color language, um, I'll, uh, let me know because I tend to say what comes to mind. And I also, some of the language that I use, is intentional because I believe it's the appropriate word to use. So, you know, um, you'll hear me say, I don't drop F-bombs in front of customers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Unless, if they start doing it, then... Once they do, the door is open. But I use words like all the time because mm -hmm. in solar, there's a lot of bull yes. and And so it's, I, I can't think of a better, more appropriate term to use that's maybe not considered crass or vulgar or offensive or whatever. It just is what it is. And, and, and that's, you know. Yeah. And if you're forewarning them, I tell them I'm going to have obnoxious, aggressive, attention grabbing focus on your home. You've been forewarned that this <laughs> will not be boring. You know, so I like that. I'm going I'm to I'm steal that one from you. Permanently borrow. There we go. Th that, that's, yeah, more, little... that's more PC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel that... Uh, that we're giving them notice there. Also, I tell them, hey, I have an outside marketing company that will do all the boring. That will not be me. Any of that that you see out there in advertising, I didn't do. As an outside marketing company did that. Anything that I'm doing, though, is going to be fun and exciting. I mean, I've I've hunted land sharks on their property, like like sharks, like <laughs> Fighting sharks on the property. I, I've done it to where uh, the client had a full basketball court, and I spent the whole video taking very bad basketball shots. And each time I did, I turned my back and said, nothing but net, over and over again. <laughs> and I'm overconfident, man, overconfident basketball man. That's awesome. And they're fun. Yeah. They, they got viral attention on them. They did their job for the client. At the same time, I had an outside marketing company that was running the boring stuff, too. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it all. I won't ignore any of it, but understand that there's going to be attention-grabbing, obnoxious, aggressive marketing on this property as well. Well, it's funny, you know, with with uh, the business coaching stuff that we're we're both involved in with uh, uh, JVP and Coach Nikki T and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that really captured m captured me and and spoke to me was mm -hmm. the uh the term get attention keep attention yes right and that's always been my mo but i i didn't realize it i didn't know i didn't have a term for it right other than just you know i was a little outrageous or a little right. outlandish but i didn't it wasn't an intentional method or mm -hmm. process you know and just having that uh hearing that for the first time at menace con one i um I was like, oh, these guys are speaking my language. I, oh, my gosh, I get it. I just had so many, I don't know, epiphanies. Right. Um, can't even believe I'm using the word epiphany. <laughs> but, yeah, I did. And, uh, man, they, they, they got my attention. They kept it. And, you know, um, now they're uh, what I call beloved family members. Right. You know, and, and even the, the circle of, of now friends that I've, I, yeah. I've garnered and, and uh, other, others that are, you know, part of the circle of influence – uh, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Well, yeah, because you're realizing that, wait a second, there are other like-minded people out there, yeah. such as myself. I'm not alone. Right? You do feel like a man <laughs> on an island at yeah. times, so. though. And I'm ridiculously blessed. I've had, Nick was my, he's the one that hired me into real estate. Yeah. So I've had him since the word go. And JVP ended up being a client of Nick's, that's how they met. And him coming and stopping at the office, that's how we became friends. All oh, right on. So it's like, I've known uh, I one since 08 and the other since 09. Wow. And so, yeah, it's like, I'll follow them wherever. I told, I, yeah, I've told them both, you're stuck with me forever, man. Yeah, when and they had, when they had their, their issues and the falling out with the, the, the other, the other the, guy, the, the other guy yeah. not to be named, when all that happened, it's like, 
there was no doubt which direction I right. was following. Yeah. Because it's like, well, I know the character of these men, and I just found out the character of the other one. See, I didn't know. I, I met all three of them, same time, right. same channels, mm -hmm. and I saw the differences in personalities, and I saw the, the dynamic of that, and it, and it worked. It worked, it, it, on the, on, at least it on did. the surface. Yeah, on the surface um, it did. You, you can see the cracks after the effect when you're in it. At the time, you're like, oh, I, but, I didn't notice. But, but it's, I was immediately drawn to Nick, and, um, you know, and then Jason just, um, I'm so amazed at his, his, really his growth. I mean, I don't want to uh, downplay his abilities then, mm -hmm. um, but wow, I mean, they're both just so dynamic. I can't wait to see. They're going to be on the biggest stages in the world. I mean, I can't. They're as good as anybody I've seen. Out oh, there. that last conference packed out space. Yeah. It was oversold by, uh, <clears throat> let's see, it was oversold by 120 some people, yeah. I believe was the final count. I, I could be actually small on that number, but it was oversold. And then the fun part was when the, I guess the AC broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I don't know. I was comfortable. But I always think it's too cold in these rooms anyway. So I, so they said, hey, AC's <laughs> broke. And I'm like, yes. I was in a long sleeve shirt and I had a vest on, a uh, wool vest. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <clears throat> I looked good, Oh, though. but that was banger content that day. Yeah, it was, it was an, it, it always is. I mean, for me now, it, it just, uh, I can't imagine it getting old. Even if I hear it again, it's, it, it's reinforcing. It's, it's new. There's, a, there's an improvement, a tweak on it, or it's just, a reminder, and then there's always something new that comes with those guys, right? right? And, um, you know, Nick uh, is directly involved with Mr. Sunshine now. and um, He's just, doing consultant work, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's, uh, you know, he's part of the Mr. Sunshine Solar family now. And, um, man, it's just this, like I said, you know, I, it's hard for me to find the words to to explain right. the, the, the changes um, not not just in my business, right? Right. Um, the all the people in my business, my team, uh, my family, my kids. Um, you know, my kids are thirty three and, and twenty nine. So it's permeating everything. And yeah, and they're they're. My daughter tells me how proud she is of me all the time. She yeah. just thinks it's so cool. You know, I did something. Uh, something happened yesterday. <clears throat> Former employee calls me up. Mm -hmm. I'm on a conference, I'm on a Zoom, a Zoom call with the team, and um, anytime I, I take a call, I let the team hear it, and because it might be a customer or whatever. Mm -hmm. This I knew who it was calling, but I just said, hold on a second, guys. And, and I, uh, he starts telling me that he's beating around the bush, and I, I could tell there was a problem. Right. And um, he needed money. He needed money. He was broke, he's at the supermarket can't pay his grocery bill. Um, he uses M power for his power where you, you pay for your kilowatt right. hours in advance. Um, hasn't been able to run the air conditioner for the last month, which is like one of the hottest months on record here. And um, basically had nowhere else to turn. Um, he didn't ask me for money. He asked me if he could, if he could work, if he mm -hmm. could provide leads. He used to do leads for me and stuff. And I said, look, you know, that's cool. I appreciate you offering that. Um, I don't have a need for that at the moment, mm -hmm. but let me give you, you know, and I, I gave him a, a significant amount of dollars to pay for his groceries, have his air conditioning, be able to afford to run his air conditioning, at least for the next month. And um, um, I said, look, you know, he goes, man, oh, I'll get it back to you. And I said, no, it's just, you know, I know you. you this, this is a guy that He's picked up families in the rain that were homeless and brought them home, right? So, yep. you know, he deserved this. And I had something that he didn't have, so I gave it to him and helped him out. And I think I probably felt better about doing that than he did about getting it, right? And um, I was telling my daughter about it, and uh, she was just so tickled by it and everything. And um, I, shared, I, I shared it on Facebook, uh, and not to brag, but to hopefully inspire people to do something nice for somebody else. Right, just open a door, pick up a package, uh, you know, buy the buy the car behind you their coffee, you know, that thing, mm -hmm. or you know, just do something nice for somebody just because. And if if everybody would just do that once in a while, and try to find reasons to say yes to things versus excuses to say no, mm -hmm. what a what a better place it would be. 
And I never used to be that guy. Isn't that crazy? No, I was the guy. I don't do anything for the practice. That was my, my thing. I paid my dues. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to get something out of it or get compensated or whatever. And after getting connected with with uh, Jason and and Nikki T and and the whole circle, you, I mean, it's changed my life profoundly, right? And all of a sudden, everything in my life is better. My business, the things that are happening with my business are just unbelievable. The attention that I'm getting from other people. Getting invited to do this today. I mean, shit, wow. I was so stoked and honored to get, you know, uh, that invitation. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 just getting asked validated something in me that says, you know, you're doing something right, man. Right. You know? So well, thank you for that. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, nope. it's, I could go on forever about that stuff. It's just, uh, yeah, incredible. But, and we're going to pause it there. Right on. And we're going to continue this in the next part of this, because I, I like to break these down into about 30 minutes topping out so that people can walk their dog and be back at their house and, right. and all that good stuff. So we're going to stop it there. Um, if you liked part one of Michael Jansen, please review, like, share, leave feedback. It all helps the show grow. Also hit the swag shop, Dad's Rule Swag on the Dot, dad's rule swag .com. on the way out helps the show as well and until next time go out and be the kick-ass adult i know you all can be